Hello, welcome to Arcade 85. Is it getting old in here or is it just me? <laughs> yes, as you can see, I'm on chemotherapy for lymphoma. Hey, how do you like the lighting here in this part of the arcade? Don't it make my green eyes blue? Isn't that crazy? I have green eyes, but they look blue with this lighting. So, welcome to Arcade 85. Hey, when are we gonna fire this place up again, huh? Let's play some games at some point. But not today, we're talking more about R-CHOP and chemotherapy. Tomorrow I go in for my third cycle, my third infusion of R-CHOP. You remember this one, R-CHOP. So if you click uh, to the link to the video that I linked below, you'll be able to see all the details that we were talking about here with R-CHOP, it's a form of chemotherapy, a series of medicines that I've been taking. And as I say, tomorrow is my last infusion. So today I'm feeling pretty good. My previous infusion was three weeks ago. These are three weeks apart. And so I'm feeling all right. Meanwhile, tomorrow's a big day. So as far as, uh, as the, the R-CHOP goes, the prednisone has been very difficult for me. Prednisone is a tough medicine. I take it at 100 milligrams a day for five days in a row with every infusion. Excuse me, it's hot in here in the arcade. So I take 500 milligrams over a five day course, which is really tough. Prednisone messes with your brain, by the way. And so crazy ideas and craziness and crazy perceptions, it's awful, but it's an important part of the regimen. I've been blessed in that a whole lot of people Many of you out here have been praying for me, and when things are dark and depressing and difficult, I've been relying on those prayers, and I've been thanking Heavenly Father for all of you who have been praying for me, and, uh, and you, you'll be blessed for doing it, because I really appreciate it. And when things are dark, I lean on that. I say, I know a lot of people are praying and fasting on my behalf. Thank you for doing that. It really does help. Uh, as far as symptoms go with our chop, uh, as I mentioned in my last video, a lot of head and neck symptoms, many of which are alleviated to some degree by elevating the head of the bed. And so the swollen nodes and the sore jaw and the sore throat and the, uh, and the pressure in the skull, these things all get better uh, by elevating the head of the bed because again, you wake up and you feel like you've been hung upside down. And so that one's been helpful for me. This time with this cycle, GI, your gastrointestinal tract, was tough. And my wife was noticing, boy, you're, you've been moaning a lot. So I would just be, oh, oh. It wasn't a classic nausea. It wasn't uh, intense pain. It was just GI discomfort. Interestingly, if I would thump on my tummy, oh. Seems silly, but that would actually help to relieve that a little bit. And I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was small intestine or if it was colon or if it was the bile duct or the liver or the pancreas. I don't know what it is that was causing that discomfort, but thumping on it a little bit seemed to help from time to time. Um, one of the medicines in our chop, that vin Christine, Oncovin, causes a peripheral neuropathy. And though I already have a little bit of that with some disc disease in my neck, I've been noticing that in my fingers and in the soles of my feet, a little bit of, uh, of numbness, which I don't like. Pardon me, I'm wiping off my sweat again. And again, I need to cool this place down. We need to have an arcade night soon. But for right now, the arcade is still rather hot. He says, as he towels off his non-existing hair, the hair with R-CHOP is actually very interesting. My buddy Troy, he did R-CHOP this time last year, six cycles, and he gave me the heads up. He says, your hair falls out in the first few weeks, and after that, it's replaced by little white hairs. And when he explained that, I thought that was unusual because that did not sound like the classic antigen effluvium that happens with chemotherapy. Classically, with chemotherapy, you've got hair follicles everywhere, right? Bazillions of little hair follicles. And the hair follicle releases the hair, doesn't produce any more hair. That's classic cancer 
chemotherapy, and a genifluvian. In this case, though, what happens and what Troy was describing accurately is hair continues to grow, but it's been affected by the chemotherapy in such a way that the hair becomes very narrow, very fine and spindly and white. And so as you can imagine, if that's the base of the hair, clack, it's going to break off. And so it's actually hair breakage. You don't, with our chopper, at least I haven't experienced so far, you don't seem to not make hair. You just make little tiny wispy white hairs instead of your classic hair that you're used to. And so sure enough, with that little base, everything breaks off. And where it bothers me the most is in my whiskers. Ooh, little tiny white spiny beard whiskers. Ah, just drive you nuts. They're terrible. But I've not had to shave this scalp for a couple of weeks. I shaved it because I didn't want to lose a whole lot of hair at this, the same time. Meanwhile, I'm just not having much hair growing in, just those little tiny white ones, which is yucky. And so, um, after the second cycle of our chop, several days later, I was still very sore and just kind of, oh, uh, just not feeling good. And so I went to my wife and I said, hey, uh, I'd like to go to Mesa Riverview Park. You wanna come with me? And she says, sure. And, uh, and Mesa Riverview is several miles from here. We're in Gilbert, but Mesa Riverview is really nice. And maybe it was the prednisone on my head. Maybe it was some other factor, but I just really felt like going to the rope structures. They have some really nice rope structures that you can climb onto. I said, you know, it's a public park. It's uh, middle of the day. It'll be nice. I can climb. I can slowly, slowly climb those rope structures. That just had appeal to me, being able to kind of stretch those muscles and maybe kind of detoxify some of my chemotherapy. And so my wife gets ready and we drive over there and she, uh, when we pull up to the park area, there's a lot of really nice shopping there. And she, uh, she says, so where do you want to go shopping? She thought I was wanting to shop. She thought the prednisone had gotten to my brain to the point where I now wanted to go shopping. No, I never really liked shopping and I can't imagine any amount of chemotherapy that would say, hey, I want to go shopping. But it was cute because that's what she thought. She heard Mesa Riverview Park and she thought that I wanted to shop. Meanwhile, I broke it to her. No, I, I want to climb on the rope structures. And she goes, oh, it's the middle of the day. It's hot. I wasn't prepared for climbing on the, on the structure. Um, tell you what, uh, can I go shopping and I'll drop you off here at the park. And so perfect arrangement. And so I went to the park and as a dermatologist, of course, I'm wearing at the time a very lightweight wicking polyester uh, shirt, pretty much designed for fishermen. Kind of a fishing, go to Bass Pro Shop style shirt. And so this is the shirt that I was wearing. And these shirts are fun because again, they're for fishermen and they, they, they wick away moisture. And, uh, and they have pockets and pockets. So if you're a fisherman, you've got your pocket and then you've got your little pockets, kind of a bait and tackle type of uh, situation with all these little pockets and nice vents. And you see a vent back here. And so kind of nice. And so I'm wearing this and, uh, and I throw on my, of course, my broad brim straw hat for sun protection. And of course I'm wearing sunglasses I'm also wearing gloves at Mesa Riverview Park because the, uh, the structure's kind of hot. The little metal joints that hold the rope structure together, they're hot. And so I'm wearing gloves and I've got uh, some light wicking pants. Uh, unfortunately, they're kind of baggy, making me look like Rex Kwon Do of Napoleon Dynamite. And so I'm there at the park by myself because Laurie's shopping nearby. And, uh, and the little kids are there because it's a school day. And so parents have little tiny kids and I'm the guy by myself on the structure, moaning, the troglodyte that's just come out from the cave. So I don't mind that everyone's ignoring me, avoiding me because you know, I'm kind of bad news. I'm kind of that weirdo element at a public park. You just don't know I mean? You just don't know what to think when you see this, right? And so I'm climbing, stretching. Doesn't take much to get totally exhausted. So I'm laying there on kind of that rubberized structure, 
Give it another go. Let me try one of these other smaller uh, rope ladder climb apparatuses or one of these little kitty climbs, trying to avoid the kids, not wanting to scare any kids. So the kids are over there. So I've got this. And it's time to head back to the shopping area at Mesa Riverview Park uh, to go back and meet my wife. She's been at Burlington Coat Factory. And so I'm walking, 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 uh, get to kind of that retail area. Yeah, it's a probably a, it's probably a third of a mile walk type of thing. It wasn't terribly far, but man, I am just beat. This chemotherapy has really whipped my endurance and I was trying to shake it off. And so I find a relatively shaded place next to one of the little retail outlet stores that had closed down. And so it's been in the COVID season, a lot of retail is closed down. And so there's an unoccupied store that has some shade and I go to lay down, got my straw hat. I'm calling my wife on the cell phone. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just laying here. So whenever you're ready, yeah, you can come pick me up. Yeah, I'm by the uh, AT Mobile store or whatever it is. I'm trying to read the signs and whatnot. So I'm just laying there in the shade on the, uh, on the sidewalk at the base of this abandoned store. And Lori, my wife, comes pulling up. She's found me. And at that exact same moment, a security guard from Mesa Riverview Park pulls up in his little white pickup. And the security guard hops out and he goes, you can't sleep here. This is private property. I'm gonna ask you to leave. And so I get up from my laying down position. He doesn't realize that my wife, Lori, has pulled up right next to him. She just, he thinks perhaps just another car has pulled up. But I'm looking at him going, um, okay. And he goes, you've got to get out of here. And I go, oh, and he goes, I'm asking you to leave. And I go, thanks for asking. You don't get it. You, you, you can't be here. And so I take off my hat and I say, look, I'm on chemotherapy. I've been exercising. I'm trying to work out the toxicity. I'm exhausted. I'm just, uh, I'm just here for the shade, just relaxing. You, I'm going to call the police on you. And he's still mad at me, even though I've explained to him, you know, I'm, I'm not homeless. But the bad news is, again, wearing the wrong clothes with the wrong look. I'd hit rock bottom. I was deemed a homeless vagrant by security. And so he's mad and he's calling the police. And it's really funny because I slowly get up, walk over to Laurie's car, which is parked next to his, hop in, and he has to ask himself, why was the homeless guy getting into an SUV with a beautiful woman right as I pulled up? He was confused. Um, it actually reminded me, that was, uh, that's now the low point, by the way, for me to be, you know, mis represented or uh, recognized as perhaps a homeless guy that was up to no good. Meanwhile, a story that I've told for years is because I always go out sun protected every time I go out running or jogging, sun protected, big hat, sunscreen, um, gloves for sun protection. Uh, once I was running in a neighborhood, not too far from the office here, I was running and a guy is out washing his car and he sees me wearing all this gear because that's what I look like when I run. And he's washing the car and he goes, what are you running from the bees? He thought I looked like a beekeeper. And so I've not done well in my physical appearance when I'm out and about on a sunny day. I just, I, I just get misinterpreted sometimes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all of your support. I'm going to be getting my big third infusion tomorrow. Wish me well. Continue to pray for me. I sure love you guys. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your arcade games and we'll see you next time.